Boeing has developed a new airborne torpedo release system that can destroy targets at long distances. In naval battles, this revolutionary invention will also change the modern battlefield, giving the fleet the ability to more effectively combat the forces of the enemy's navy and certain water infrastructure. This will be particularly useful in the destruction of submarines, which are currently practically invulnerable. The American company Boeing has once again introduced an innovative weapon prototype that could change the perception of naval battles and future wars. Engineers at the company decided to combine lightweight Mark 84, torpedoes, and AGM-84 SLAM-R cruise missiles. The result of this was the creation of a high-altitude anti-submarine weapon, or HAWK. The U.S. Air Force wanted to enhance the combat capabilities of its aircraft, particularly the anti-submarine P-8 Poseidon, in order to protect them from entering the enemy's air defense zone and make them more effective. The Air Force leadership also desired a cheaper and more mass-produced means of destroying enemy targets. Similar to how the appearance of torpedoes changed the course of warfare over a hundred years ago. By combining the best features of all three products, Boeing has managed to create a unique and revolutionary weapon, the Hawk. Like its predecessors, the high-altitude anti-submarine warfare weapon is designed on a modular principle. This means that existing torpedoes in the arsenal of the U.S. and allied countries can easily be converted into precision weapons without the need for special production facilities. Now let's take a closer look at the structure of the complex. To convert the torpedo, only a set of air launch accessory, ALA wings, installed on top of the torpedo, and a navigation system borrowed from the JDAM air bomb installed in the nose fairing are needed. The wing system module air launch accessory is borrowed from the proven AGM-84 Slammer cruise missile and provides the torpedo with gliding capabilities. The module includes a plate for attaching necessary components to the torpedo, as well as two wings for the front section and a traditional tail section. This configuration allows the torpedo to accurately glide to a specified area, while also having a decent range and the ability to maneuver in the air, bypassing air, defense systems, and other potential obstacles. The prototype is still undergoing testing, so the exact specifications are unknown. There are also ongoing design improvements and enhancements to the model, all of which could significantly impact the final product. From the information available, it can be said that the U.S. Navy desires an operational range of the system of at least 20 nautical miles, or 36 kilometers. According to military experts, this should be sufficient to keep the carriers out of the enemy's air defense zone. At the same time, the developers assure that they will be able to provide a range similar to that of the guided air bombs JDAM, which is about 40 miles or 72 kilometers. But this range raises a lot of questions. The thing is, 70 kilometers is enough to stay out of the range of short and medium range air defense systems, as well as short range missiles from enemy fighters. At the same time, it is not enough to defend against medium and long range missiles from fighters, as well as long range air defense systems, such as the S-400 and its counterparts. Furthermore, in the event of action against the fleets of major powers with powerful military air forces and aviation strike groups, the use of these torpedoes can also be problematic. The reason is that the aircraft carrying such weapons are extremely vulnerable and their use requires full or at least partial air superiority. Otherwise, enemy air patrols can easily intercept the torpedo carrying aircraft. There are still many questions about aircraft, potential carriers of Hay AWC complexes. At the moment, the most likely candidate is the new anti-submarine aircraft, Boeing P-8 Poseidon. This aircraft is a military modification of the Boeing 737 passenger jet. Consequently, it has large dimensions and is highly vulnerable to enemy air defense means. Among the candidates, transport aircraft such as the C-130 Hercules or C-17, as well as strategic bombers B-52, B-2, and B-21 may also be considered. Fighter jets and helicopters are also considered as potential carriers, but this may pose certain difficulties. The issue is that an air-launched torpedo is a rather bulky object, which may cause integration problems with a fighter jet. Additionally, such a weapon configuration would significantly impact the aircraft's flight characteristics, making it extremely vulnerable. 
The same applies to helicopters. Some experts also suggest that in the future, the complex could be integrated for launches from ground-based or even surface platforms. As an example, they mention the GLSDB missile, which is an integration of GMLRS rockets and small caliber glide bombs. As a potential carrier similar to the first case, they mention the HIMARS and M270 MLRS systems, but for now, it's just talk and there are no further specifics on this matter. Now let's move from potential problems to the benefits that this, without exaggeration, revolutionary invention can bring. The first and most important aspect is the simplicity and cost-effectiveness of the product. Unlike guided missiles, which have a complex design, expensive electronics, and other technological innovations to counter enemy air defense, Hawk is essentially a torpedo, with wings attached and a guidance system added. Essentially, it is a counterpart to JDAM air bombs, but designed to target surface and underwater targets. These modules are easy to produce, and reconfiguration is possible directly at the U.S. Air Force and Navy bases without the need for special equipment. Additionally, the U.S. and its allies have significant stocks of Mark 54 torpedoes, allowing for mass deployment of these products. The second advantage is the difficulty of detection by air defense systems. Yes, some may argue that such a guided torpedo can be noticed even visually, and they would be partially right. However, the fact is that doing so is extremely problematic. At the same time, it retains the advantage of maneuverability. As the experience of using guided bombs shows, even the most modern air defense systems are not always able to detect, let alone destroy, such a small-sized target. The third advantage of such weaponry is the possibility of its mass application. Thanks to its simplicity, cost-effectiveness, and difficulties in counteraction, the U.S. Navy and allied countries will be able to mass deploy such flying torpedoes, potentially causing significant damage to the enemy fleet. And the fourth advantage is the launch altitude. In addition to the aforementioned target detection problems, currently the carrier aircraft needs to descend from an altitude of eight and nine kilometers to a few hundred or even tens of meters, which takes a lot of time and puts the crew at additional risks. By using new technologies, this drawback has been turned into an advantage as the higher the launch altitude, the greater the distance the torpedo can cover. Accordingly, the risks for the crew are significantly reduced. Now, let's talk about the potential tactics for using this weaponry. First and foremost, we are talking about the destruction of enemy submarines, which are practically invulnerable today. In most countries, their submarines are carriers of strategic weapons, including nuclear ones, and in the event of a global conflict, they are relied upon to play a role as one of the main striking components, covertly striking at the enemy's strategic rear. Currently, Americans rely on classic methods of combat, including their own submarines and naval aviation. In the case of submarines, from the moment information about the potential location of an enemy vessel is received to the moment of the strike, several hours may pass. During this time, the submarine can easily hide. The second method is even less effective, as the chance of one submarine encountering another in the vast expanse of the ocean is extremely small. Even considering the possibility of external target designation, there is still the problem of how to catch up with the enemy. In the future, thanks to the How We See system, the carrier aircraft, after receiving external target designation, will be able to release a guided torpedo in the area where the potential enemy is located. The torpedo, after detaching from the wing, will surface and search for the target thanks to an advanced guidance system. All of this significantly reduces the time from receiving information about the enemy to delivering the strike. The next potential targets could be the enemy's aircraft carrier strike groups, particularly the aircraft carriers of the People's Republic of China. The thing is, it is very problematic, if not impossible, to destroy such a group with the existing means today, except for nuclear weapons. Thanks to guided torpedoes, carrier aircraft can make a mass launch against the enemy's ships causing significant damage. In addition, the aircraft can operate far from the coast and be covered by friendly air defense.
As of today, no country has officially expressed interest in acquiring such weaponry. However, considering the global trend towards militarization, this could change in the near future. Among the potential buyers of such weaponry are countries like Australia, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, India, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. All of these countries already have MK-54 torpedoes in their arsenal, as well as anti-submarine aviation that needs to expand its capabilities. Additionally, no other country has announced the development of a system similar to Hawk. It is possible that there are undisclosed developments of such weaponry, or other armies are simply awaiting the results of testing from the American side, which is not known to us. In the near future, we may see the use of winged torpedoes on the battlefield in Ukraine, similar to the use of winged bombs GLSDB. Existing Su-24 bombers or potentially future Western aircraft, such as the F-16, could become carriers of such weapons. In this case, developers and customers will be able to fully assess the use of such a system in real combat conditions, gaining invaluable experience. Ukraine, in turn, will receive an effective means to combat the Russian fleet, including submarines, which are currently invulnerable. In addition, there will be the possibility to strike at ships in their locations, including in densely populated areas such as Sevastopol and Novorossiysk, which is currently practically impossible due to the potentially large number of civilian casualties. In such a case, Ukraine will also have additional capabilities to strike at sea platforms, observation posts, and crossings, including the Crimean Bridge. Thank you for watching the video until the end. Please subscribe to us, don't forget to click on the notification for the next videos, and also leave a like and a comment. All of this helps in promoting our channel and makes the videos more interesting. We wish everyone a good mood and until we meet again.